Welcome back, everybody. We are going to present the third presentation of the Continuing Masterclass of 2021 with the student Emil de Jaeger. Uh, his presentation called Music for Creative Learning. And I'm going to read a little bit of his bio um, just to introduce the student. Emil de Jaeger is a trumpet player, composer, and educator who combines music performance with music cognition. He was awarded Outstanding Trumpet Solist by Winton Marsalis in the 2020 Jack Rudin Jazz Championship. And he was a member of the prestigious 10, uh, sorry, 2019 Betty Carter Jazz Ad program uh, with performance around the world. And um, Emil as uh, Maestro George Garzon and Chase Morning are uh, his panelists, and I was his uh, advisor for the project. So Emil, if you're ready, please go ahead. All right. Hi, my name is Emil Dieger. Today I'll be presenting my culminating experience project titled Music for Creative Learning. This project is designed as a pedagogy and as a music program with a curriculum. My mission is to use music as an interconnective medium for creative learning and cultural immersion in early education. In our current system of learning, we usually prioritize math and science as the most important subjects, followed by English and history. Art, dance, and theater are below that, often deemed extracurricular or unnecessary. And that's because the public education system was created during the industrialism period to train workers for lucrative occupations, such as doctors and engineers, not musicians and dancers. Well, what's the problem with this now? The system is inequitable. Kids have a wide spectrum of subject preferences beyond just math and science. If we always prioritize in school, then certain kids with creative talents will be left behind and their potential talent can be diminished or lost altogether. This standardized learning ignores a paradigm of modern education that each student is unique and learns differently. Music, however, is an effective vehicle to structure a curriculum that prioritizes all subjects equally, which is why, which is why my educational approach uses music as an interconnective medium for creative learning, featuring cumulative working modules catered to children's ages 4 through 12 in schools and music programs across the U.S. Children work at their own pace and form their own learning before moving on, referencing Jerome Bruner's spiral curriculum method. I developed this because we don't have many systems currently that account for the fact that every learner processes information differently. Every time test is unfair to learners with longer processing times, even with the same depth of understanding. Finally, I wanted this approach to stimulate cognitive development, foster creativity, and develop global civics. These are comprehensive goals that can't be tangibly measured, otherwise known as non-behavioral educational outcomes. Now I'd like to define creativity not solely entailing artistic talent, but as the process of having an original idea. It needs to have measurable value, whether it's in their culture, community, family, or just themselves. It falls under divergent production, which is a skill measuring someone's ability to find as many different solutions as possible to one situation. Creative learning helps children attain information with greater depth and quicker speed. And it ultimately is a skill that goes beyond critical thinking. That is why we should be worried because the Torrance test of creative thinking shows that creativity is decreasing from kindergartners to sixth graders. Schools only consider our current measurement of intelligence because it's an effective way to compare individuals. The current system prepares students for standardized assessment tests showing an improvement in mathematical, linguistic, and spatial intelligence scores. However, these tests do not measure musical, bodily, kinesthetic, naturalistic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and spiritual intelligence. All eight types of intelligence are highlighted by Howard Gardner and can be developed at the same time through music, which is why it's an effective tool for teaching a curriculum. If tests only measure three out of the eight, there will be misleading results and institutions will fail to recognize creative potential. 
Why is this decreasing trend of creativity important? Because these stages in a child's biological development are the most creative and formative phases of their life. Maximizing this peak of creative development leads me to the importance of creativity. Well, in our society today, schools and all fields of the workforce are seeking a more creative younger generation. Being a good critical thinker is not enough anymore. How can we expect children to develop that skill if we're suppressing their potential? That's why my program uses music and learning early on to explore and utilize their full creative capability. The research I've done to support my methods cites the most important psychologist that contributed to the research of cognitive development and its importance in children's education. Constructivism, multiple intelligence, social learning, musical play, cerebral dominance, and learning modalities are all theories that I mentioned or have mentioned as part of this program. I learned and studied all of these theories from Marco Pignataro's performance pedagogy class this year. Interconnected learning is very important because it allows me to bring many philosophies together to create the best learning experience. And I chose all these theories specifically because the sound before symbol approach is ingrained into all of them. It's the cornerstone of music education and we need more of it in our learning. Now I'd like to tell you how my approach combines academic subjects with musical sounds, tools, and rhythms. If we choose our language as English, our folktale story could be three little pigs. Then we introduce kinesthetics with one group clapping every two beats and another every four beats, clapping twice every two before it lines up with every four. With that same idea, one group claps every two beats, another every three beats, known as the duple and triple feel respectively. This is the heartbeat for our musical rhythm where we can truly access infinite rhythmic possibilities and experience the fluidity of the subdivisions. I'm also using tetrachords, a concept that I learned from Maestro Danilo Perez's workshops as a more relatable form of learning harmony and voice leading, moving away from conventional triadic and scalar structures. Split into two parts, the lower tetrachord shown on D1 is made up of the first four consecutive notes in a major scale, and the upper tetrachord made up of the last four consecutive notes. If they start with the lower tetrachord, they will sing as many combinations only using the title. Do it in sync with the rhythm that we've been clapping and the children are already composing, adapting, and exploring, similar to hypothesis and research in science using these elements to create a developed piece, unwritten and eventually written is the main goal, which is why my compositions represent how a child completes this curriculum, step-by-step step, like a playthrough. They're in English, Spanish, French, and Greek, highlighting a folktale story with a distinct rhythm to pair with their choice of language. Their two chosen notes will cumulatively incorporate two lower and two upper tetrachords. These compositions can be inspiration for imitation through social learning, referencing philosopher Lev Vygotsky. Without further ado, this first piece is Three Little Pigs, utilizing the 12-8 Abaqua and Bembe rhythms of West Africa found in Black American music, with B and D as two notes for the tetrachords. If you cannot hear the audio, please let me know.
Continuing in Spanish with La Pincoya, a Chilean folktale about the island mermaid of Chiloe, with the 12A cueca chilena and abacua rhythms, as well as E and D for the tetrachords. In French, I used Le Petit Chaperon Rouge, The Tale of the Little Red Riding Hood, originally written by French author Charles Perrault, utilizing the 4-4 Zuku found in the French Caribbean with my two notes as C and A flat.
Final composition before I close this presentation is in Greek and English called Aesop's Fables, specifically the tale of the boy who cried wolf, utilizing the 7-8 Kalamatianos rhythm found in Kalamatianos, Greece, with my two notes as E flat and A. Before I close this, I just wanted to say that I had an incredible time putting this project together with my parents' belief that music, knowledge, and fun should always coexist. Thank you to my girlfriend, Christine, for her valuable feedback and ideas. Thank you to the directors who were there to foster my creative endeavors, my advisors who gave, gave timely and useful criticism, my teachers who constantly developed my musicianship, and my collaborators who were generous with their time and made the music outstanding and enjoyable. Finally, thank you to the Berkeley Global Jazz Institute for an incredible year. I'd like to close with my belief that our current global environment demands an arts education that uses music to make children go beyond acquiring science and math skills 
and truly embraces their full imaginative potential to think creatively. Thank you. Yes, Emil, congratulations. What a great presentation. Um, let's start jumping in the, the comments and question, and uh, I would like to immediately give the uh, word to Maestro Garzon as part of you, uh, your panel of advisors. Wow, Emil, deep, great, unbelievable. You blew me away. Um, I want to go way back to the beginning when you were talking about you know, allowing the children at that young age to express themselves. I really think you hit it on the head. That's really important. Uh, allowing them to, you know, be creative at that young age and giving them a chance to feel the way they want to feel. That I really think is going to help decide what happens later. So I agree with you on that. That's a unbelievable point for myself uh when i was growing up i never thought that i would be playing the type of music that i would be playing and uh, i didn't even know about it but because of people not stifling me and telling me what to do and how i should play i think it allowed me get, to get to that point on the flip side i think i like your version of the three little pigs better than the original <laughs> so, so that's really good. Um, uh, you know, just overall, it's stunning. Every year that I, when I listen to these master's programs, I mean, you, you're all thinking of things I would have never conceived, you know, at the level that you're thinking. I mean, as far as you're playing, you know, you, you've really excelled. The intonation between you and the singer is flawless, the, you know, the tunes are great. Every, every, I don't know what to say. You know, I don't want to build your ego up too much because then you're going to get a big head on me. So it's really tremendous thinking, how you put it together. Uh, you know, your sound on your instrument, everything is, is fabulous. So, you know, I just hope you continue to pursue everything that you're doing because you're way on the right track. But you have that... You know, meeting your dad, you have that head for, you know, not only sophistication, but thinking into the outer realm of the stratosphere. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that was enough. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, George. Uh, and uh, Chase, uh, you also were one of the panelists for this presentation. Emil, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, it's it's really made a, a ton of progress since when I first I, we met, I think twice, right, to to talk about the presentation and uh, uh, just slowly making, you know, fine tuning things and figuring out the form, the direction, that kind of thing. And um, congratulations. Yeah, it's it's really improved a lot. And I, I see it so strongly, you know, all all the work we're doing here and and working with the details of music and and the ideas of how these sounds can open up for us, you know, here, <laughs> you know, older, wiser musicians, but starting from a young age with, with kids like this, oh my God, like that's a future I want to see. So it's really powerful. I see, I see it so strongly. I was writing down a few notes that I'll, that, that I'll, um, I'll just pr present to you now and we can, we can talk more later if, if you would like, basically sure. uh, things that, you know, we went, we've gone through many iterations of this project and how you present it, how you structure that kind of thing. And um, just a few notes, basically coming the, from the perspective, which you're going to encounter of someone who's coming from a different side of the world, like a, an administrator or someone in charge of curriculum or that kind of thing at a school, you're going to be talking with people like this, right, eventually. So um, from that perspective, uh, the, the, I, just a few things. The first, the beginning of your project, you talk a lot about how students are there's a diversity of educate of learning styles and education styles for students and that's why it's in uh you know we we want to foster certain talents but they're being left behind in the system which is really important you're making that's a completely true and, and important statement but there i was wondering if you were maybe missing a little bit about of why just music itself is important right right from the get-go to also talk about not only that you know music is one of those extra talents that is being neglected but why is it important that everyone should be learning music from the get-go that might be something uh important to to bring there a little bit more clearly focus on that mm -hmm. um 
the you you there was one moment where you which was fantastic because you didn't have this before where you had an example of like in a class like what you would do for example an example of, uh, of like uh, the duples and the triples and something like that it was a little unclear just because you kind of said it in a few sentences you know in a in a case like this i would go even further i would demonstrate it go ahead pretend we're a class and and say what you would say to the students because I, I can imagine people listening to you and I get it because because I'm we're, we're all aware of what's going on. But but for someone who's coming, especially outside of the music field, to be a little bit clearer about your example and the, what what the pedagogy would physically look like in the classroom, I think that would be really helpful. And then along with that, connecting that then with the music that you presented, because this music is awesome. You know, I can't wait to see how it develops. But being clear about like what is the function of this music inside of the classroom right and we've talked about this as these are examples for example that students could listen to maybe actually learn with the music and have inspirational ideas of where this could take them as they're learning the concepts um so being aware of that and fitting that in then to how you describe a, like a lesson plan for example i think that would be super helpful for this presentation um the, there's a few times when, when you're saying you're referencing like certain uh, educational theories and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that That's cool, but I, I think you don't even need to go there. Go ahead and just put it on the slide, cite the, cite the people, and it, it, it might break up the flow a little bit of the, of the topics that you're talking about. Um, just that's a really tiny, tiny minor thing. And then um, the last thing with the music, you know, I was thinking about the, the I love the, these melodies that you're writing, you know, it's so amazing to hear these put in the tetrachords and exploring these color shifts too, which you didn't talk about as much, but like using mm -hmm. tetrachords and the dark and bright and that kind of stuff that you're exploring. I'm wondering if in the future, when you think about the, the music developing also the orchestration, of it because I hear it so strongly in the melodies, but how do these tetrachords then relate to the bass part, right? Like the bass melody, for example, or how do they relate to the piano part? And especially mm -hmm. how do they relate to the improvisation? Because I heard a lot of improvisation that was fantastic, amazing, but maybe could be more clearly related to the concepts that you're exploring. You know, like how would you improvise in a fixed setting in a classroom using the kids one, two, four, three, three, four, two, one. Okay, first inversion, kind of like okay. that. And you might, for example, have a piece that you show the development of that. So you start out very simple with this melody. You start with just those small details, improvisation, then you see where that can lead you. And so something like that for your pieces might be helpful as a, as a pedagogical tool in the classroom as well. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. A bunch of, a bunch of it is I'm throwing at you because I love your project so much and I want to see it really happen. You know what I mean? This is like something I really care about. So. Um, yeah. So these are all things that I, I think you could just continue developing and it's just going to it's going to be amazing from there. So congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Chase. Thank, Thank you. you, Chase, for these comments. And uh, um, as your advisor, Emil, let me start before the question I have for you. First, with a comment about how um, I have to say I, I rarely came across a student uh, that was constantly in such an input mode as yourself and and i really really need to uh publicly congratulate you for this quality you have to always i can not just me with everybody that you've been in touch at the, at the program every time somebody give you a, a you just did it with chase by the way but that's exactly you know how you've been for this whole year it's everything you hear you don't ever put a filter you just take it in and then you kind of go to a process and then develop it. This is, this is really a wonderful quality you have as a, as a, you know, a researcher of the music and as a student. And, and I hope you never, never, you know, uh, part from that because it's, I think it really served you extremely well. And it's been so great to have you in, in the program. And, 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 and I, and that to me is such a great quality in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of also a little bit of the comments that Chase uh, made you, it's very important to me that you also talk a little bit about how you see yourself continuing this project in the future, because I know this started from a very specific point, and then you sort of like start kept on expanding, and I think you really laid a good foundation for your first stage, and I'm sure that you have a lot of other uh, projects stemming from this foundation. So if you can tell a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so the future was actually once the present of what I wanted to figure out. Um, but due to the fact that I really wanted to flush out this idea completely uh, from, from the root of it, um, I felt like I was going to stay away from this part of the project. But in the future, I would like to design and develop this whole approach, this way of thinking into a virtual interactive educational program that's accessible to music schools and programs across the US. And it, it kind of takes like a similar flavor of Kodai, Del Crows and Orf, where they take musical games and learning music through playing games. And it puts it in a 21st century context because we're putting it on technology for children to interact with it that way. So I want to make this type of stuff accessible for them in that format. Um, it would be in a computer with a MIDI keyboard. It can be administered by a teacher or it can be done by themselves as a student. But overall, it, it also takes um, some of the pressure off of the teacher to basically reinforce this pretty constructive, open-ended approach to teaching. So it kind of takes that worry off of them and puts it in the program so that you know children can have a, a concise way to deal with the material so that's that's what i wanted to do in the future is make this into an app and have everyone use it which was really your first idea when you when you thought about that so I, i'm glad that you you're reconnecting to it because i i think there's you know, this could be really something that uh, is very going to be very no innovative, but I don't know anything that would presently look anything resemble what you're thinking, you know, in terms of what you're trying to plan to do. Well, congratulations again, and Maestro Danilo, uh, if you want to give some question or comment to. Yeah, fantastic. And Mia, yeah, I'm so proud of you uh, from the from the get go. I met you. Um, looking at where a relationship from the time I met you, it's really um, um, really an honor to, to have been working with you and a privilege at the same time. Um, I love to see the Stetra courts um, taking life in the hands and just keep growing and expanding. Um, let me see, I mean, a um, couple, I love, I love the whole project. I'm, I, I, I side with a lot of the uh, comments Shay's made and um, the, there's a couple things on the presentation I think it would be helpful. I think the first part could be a little shorter and you can get to it a little quicker. You know, sure. that, that, would be, that, would be, that would be just a couple, couple um, things that I, that, I, that I would perceive. The other thing I would say, um, there's such a great opportunity um, with this project to take the concept of, um, of, uh, of, of hard topics that we are facing right now in humanity and in terms of future plans that um, you could start addressing in a way that, that you, could, you could really use this project as a way to create a model of trespassing education, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm envisioning in the future. It's like you, you create the, uh, the platform, the classroom, through a music, my dad always talked about this when I was a kid, and you create this, this environment for the hard topics to be addressed, and you'll be singing them. You'll be singing them, and then you can explore it in that way. And there's such a potential from early on in life to start having delicate um, um, conversations about, about racism, about, about the future of, of, you know, where do we go from here? That, that I'm so just so so optimistic and proud about it. The same way you can teach these wonderful songs that you were doing, envision this in the future as a way to trespass the message and, and create um, uh, the topics and the interconnection of different areas of the, of the issues that are in, 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 that are very prevalent right now that are difficult. you know things like climate change, immigration, uh, racism, um, um, you know, all those things that you envision that in the future as, as a part of interconnection. It, you have something beautiful. Um, uh, you have a spaceship ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, Maestro. Jump in the spaceship, Emil. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll do. <laughs> Any last comment, Emil? Um, no, I mean, I'm. I thank you for all the comments. I wanted to say that I'm. I'm looking forward to make a presentation too for many different time lengths, many different audiences, because it's uh, it's such a flushed out idea that I'm trying to explore with all of you here that um, it's only the first draft of a bunch of different iterations of how I'm going to explain this. So thank you for listening today. Absolutely. Congratulations. You work so hard and, uh, and uh, congratulations on this achievement. Thank you, George, for being with us and all the faculty. I invite you to tune in in 15 minutes for last presentation of the morning with Noam Tanzer. Congratulations, Emil. See you soon. Thanks.